All right, for this uh, video, I want to uh, begin by giving a shout out to my old buddy Jared down at Academy Sports who got me set up with these nice waders here. As you see right here, it was a display. And he went to the back and found me a box and got me all set up. So today, on today's video, we're going to be using these new waders to try to keep me dry because I don't like getting wet, especially when it's cloudy and it's cold like it is right now. So thank you, Jared. Hey folks, we are heading to the river. I was looking at my photographs today of buffalo fishing last spring. And on this day, one year ago today, we got 40 buffalo in just a few hours. As they were running up the river to quickly spawn, and they were there for only a short time and they were gone. So we're not wasting any time. We're getting down to the river to see if they are pinpoint accurate on their timing uh, I don't have a lot of years of uh, history with them to know exactly if they do or not but we're gonna give it a try and see I know the rivers up pretty good right now because uh, it has rained and rained the last bit and uh, the creeks that we're seeing as we're driving along are pretty high and pretty muddy so we're not sure what we're gonna find up here but uh, we're gonna go find out. So here in Tennessee, on a rough fish, like a carp, buffalo, gar, sucker, uh, it is legal to throw a net to catch them. And so that's what we do when they're in these patterns where they're schooling up and getting in these uh, dense, dense patterns. Uh, it is the way that we put meat on the table in mass quantity. And I, understand and I totally get the catch and release and the sportsmanship and the and the conservation and all of that and that which is the reason why we don't fill our freezer with bass we don't fill the freezer full of smallmouth bass to feed our family all year long that's not how you do it if you're a true sportsman catfish carp buffalo suckers it's those type of fish that are the perfect fish for filling freezers and canners. Fill your pantry full of canned fish. If you're a uh, homesteader or even or any anybody that is wanting to get a supply of fish for your family, and I know not all of you have families, so you ain't worried about it, but I guarantee you that 100% of you eat, although maybe you don't all like fish, but that's neither here nor there we do and that's what we do so I am going to be showing you hopefully if the fish are there how we go about getting large amounts of fish in a fairly short amount of time and we eat this around year round we eat fish year around and we don't all just eat catfish year round or just suckers year round or whatever but we eat some type of fish just about on a weekly basis. So you guys stick around. We're gonna to try to do some fishing here. It's a little worse than I thought it was gonna be. Mm -mm -mm. Looks like chocolate milk and it is deep. And it is absolutely rushing. We're gonna do some observations, see if we spot anything, any activity here. It is so murky and, and muddy, you just can't see the fish like we could last year, so. We may miss the run this year, I don't know, but we're gonna to try to get into some shallows up in the grassy areas and see if they're up in there. Well, I'm easing up off the main river channel and coming back up into this grass and 
Oh, there one must have been a fish go right there. So far, I haven't been seeing anything. So that was a mud ball was all I seen where one took off. So I don't know if we're gonna find anything here. Best as I can tell, there are not fish available here for mass consumption. It's more or less nothing really. I haven't seen anything. And that is very typical when you're, if you're trying to live a homesteading lifestyle or if you're trying to live a wildlife lifestyle, wildlife does not bend to shape itself around your wants and your needs. You have to figure out, you have to be smarter than the wildlife. You have to figure out how to find them and be ready to get them when they're there. Don't, don't put your schedule around a certain day. Don't say just because I got, we got fish here last year on May the 5th, that that means they're gonna be here every year. But it sure doesn't hurt to have it on your calendar so you know about when they run. But there is nothing here. They're not here. If they were running up in here by the hundreds like they were last year, we'd just get our gigs and start gigging them. We, uh, legally, you can gig them, snag them, net them, however. You're, you're not gonna throw a net in here and do any good. But, there's a limb with a funny twitch. I wanna show you this. There's a nervous limb right there. Hmm. If it just did that one time and stopped, I'd say a fish hit it, but that's odd. The current's hitting it just at the right angle to make it nervous. Well, folks, that's about as disappointing as it can get right there. Come with the hopes of getting 30 or 40 fish and not even see a fish. Seen one dirt ball of mud stir up in the water or a fish had been, you can't eat too good on that. So this is just another lesson in learning. What do you learn from something like this? When somebody's out there catching a lot of fish, there's been a lot of time put into that. That just didn't happen and it just don't happen every time somebody that's successful over a period of time does it through learning there's a game warden over there i'll just kind of tone my voice down so anyway we are going to bring you some videos that actually have some success in them this video is not too exciting i'll have to admit it was kind of a chocolate milk kind of a day so anyway you guys have a wonderful day we're gonna get out of here and, and hope for better fishing in the future see you bye